So guys, let's move forward on this meeting. Okay, so um, the purpose of this meeting is to review um, and allow for any public comment on the hazard scoring that we did and identifying some of the um, hazards. Is that right? Yes, that is correct. Does anybody need a copy of what we did last week? No. Okay. Or to or to Monday. Liz, I sent you uh, just sent you a email with the because I okay. forgot my thumb drive uh, while trying to rush out of the office. Okay. All right. So uh, let me get that email open so I can look at it. Yep, and it's got a slide deck. So okay. Could you, you want me to share? It? Yeah. Could you share that? Yeah. Okay. So this is in my Gmail, right? Okay. Let me find that. So Here should I make go. you host? Should I make you host? Here we go. What? Yeah. I, I, I mean, if you need to to share. Um. Let's see. Share screen. Uh, here yeah. we go. Here we go. Share. Uh. Does, does yeah. anyone want me to open it big? No, it's fine. That's fine. Let me just That's see what big. happens. Let me just see what happens. Okay. As it takes forever. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's very familiar with the state's hazard mitigation. Yes. Yeah, okay. but that's, we just have to align the town's hazard mitigation plan. Here we go. All right. Um, and let's see, got it. And it has your notes too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you don't have to worry about that side. Okay, Actually, slide. Those are my notes that are from a previous person that used it way before I started. It was good. <laughs> Woo! Liz, I forgot to record this. Since you're the host, can you punch the record button and record this? I sure can. Thank you. Um, I think I might need to stop sharing. And now let me go to record. Record to the cloud. Yes, please. Recording in progress. Awesome. Alrighty, we are about to uh, commence our public meeting to discuss the Middlesex Local Hazard Mitigation Plan for public comment. So we're going to review what we worked on um, a few days ago. And uh, I'm going to share my screen. And we're gonna let Keith take it away. Okay. Yeah. And just tell me when to move the slides. Okay, I will. Uh, thank you everybody for coming today. Uh, my name is Keith Coven. I handle emergency management planning for CBRPC. And uh, with me also is Will Pitkin, one of our uh, just a well, not associate planner, just a planner, uh, but works in land use and fills in <laughs> as needed, which is generally what all our planners do. <laughs> uh, just to review uh, local hazard mitigation plans, it, we develop a hazard profile for each town, uh, and the two primary things are the hazard profile and the mitigation actions. Those are the biggest pieces of the plan. Uh, we also do a community profile, but it's just an exercise in thinking through hazard mitigation for each town and trying to think about ways to mitigate hazards uh, moving forward. You know, so uh, whether it's loss of transportation infrastructure, housing, uh, loss of life, even agricultural lands, whatever that may be. Uh, and, you know, mitigation is just that long-term action of trying to, trying to figure out a way to prevent the loss of things we like. Uh, could you move to the next slide, please? Uh, wait, hold on. I might have skipped one. Nope. Okay, there we go. Okay, there That's we go. Uh, one of the big things uh, with the hazard mitigation plans, so having an active LHMP allows you to be able to access FEMA's hazard mitigation grant program funding. Uh, both the LA, or the, uh, HMGP, which we have from last summer's event, and most likely we will have again from this summer's event, but also uh, the uh, yearly BRIC grants. So even if we had no disasters, there is still FEMA funding we can get yearly, uh, which- Did you say BRIC grants? Yeah, which is actually how the LHMP is uh, funded. Does it, does it, does that, stand? that stands for Building Resilient okay. Infrastructure and in Communities. Okay, great, sorry. Oh, that's all right. Okay. Uh, yeah, and if you have any questions anytime, feel right. free to stop me. Uh, 
but yeah, this is it's uh, LHMPs help the communities think through and kind of do a little bit of the capital planning for that long term, and it, it's for there for a five year time period. Uh, from FEMA's own estimates and the federal government's uh, looking at uh, mitigation funding, they believe, uh, so they generally use what's called a benefit cost analysis for any of those programs. And they believe for every dollar that is spent usually to mitigate, ends up saving $6 over the life of that uh, mitigation activity. Uh, you know, so if you can put in a larger culvert because it's not going to fail, realistically, you should end up saving larger money. Uh, things like that. Uh, Vermont also has the Emergency Relief and Assistance Fund, which uh, also has a sizable uh, reimbursement uh, for Middlesex once this plan is completed and adopted. Uh, that would be a 10% increase in reimbursement from the state uh, for any federally declared disaster. Okay, next slide. Oh, what's, what's the, what, what's the what, current uh, rate for Middlesex? Do you know? Seven and a half percent. Seven, yeah. So you get a base seven and a half percent from the state, uh, whether you do any planning. Uh, if a town, there's four pieces to the first step, which increases that another 5%. Uh, that's the being a member of the NFIP, National yeah. Flood Insurance Program. Mm -hmm. uh, the 2019 Bridge and Road Standards, mm -hmm. uh, a current local emergency management plan, which is done yearly, and then an LHMP, which is done every five years. If you have those four, they increase that to 12 and a half percent. And then if uh, if you have the uh, uh, river corridor uh, bylaws, or at least the interim version, which the state granted uh, after 2013 when they implemented this, some towns could get an interim, so it's not quite the full standard. But uh, either that or under NFIP, if you're a member of the community rating system, which requires increased things uh, as far as NFIP. Uh, you can then get to 17 and a half percent reimbursement which is the so, most the state does. so middle i mean i i'm aware of all that um but i does middle does middle six have the river corridor it has interim status of that okay we only have one town in the region that actually has a full uh, river corridor bylaw as east montpelier uh, and there were some problems with that with the state uh, so I think pretty much other towns chose not to, it cho chose to go to the interim standard and not a full bylaw acceptance. Okay. I can discuss with more with you on that. I, 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 I wrote, not that, I wrote that rule, so I, <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I do know about the program. I just didn't know Middlesex had an interim. Yes. But it's at yeah. 17 and a half. Yeah, exactly. And uh, you can actually go online if you just uh, surf uh, uh, Google, uh, uh, Vermont Community Reports or uh, the ERAP, yep. it, you can actually look in each town okay. and it'll, you know, it'll uh, tell you exactly what. I thought Middlesex had it and then rescinded it. That's why I was confused. Yeah. So, well, so yeah. Oh, just to clarify, the being part of the National Flood Insurance Program, that's not just, that's also using those regulations, the, the flood insurance regulations that we pass as part of our town plan and our zoning, right? Yes. That, that's where that compliance is. Yes. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because to be in the NFIP right. program, yes, you have to okay. utilize right. this piece. Just one, part okay, go ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things we have to uh, uh, address is any changes in trends or, uh, you know, uh, most of our towns haven't seen large development in the last five years, but, you know, if there was any new uh, development projects or anything that had been built uh, recently in this plan, we have to address that. And, uh, you know, and as long, I mean, if it's not in the floodplain, it's not really too much of an issue, but if it's creating new hazards, you have to discuss how how the development is happening and how the town is keeping it from creating new hazards. You know, uh, so development review boards uh, and uh, town bylaws are important in those steps. But, uh, once the draft plan is completed, it'll be put up for public comment. Uh, so anybody that has any issues with any part of it, you can uh, comment on it. There also is an online survey uh, that link did not work. Yes, that's why I brought you a new poster today. <laughs> okay. uh, because the, yes, yeah, something happened to the previous link. Uh, we lost the, the Google Forms broke, okay. you know. So uh, I brought a new link and I will also, will email it Thank to you, you as That'd well. Great. So we can get that out to the community. Next slide. Uh, these are just some of the top hazards that uh, 
that are often addressed in these town, uh, these plans. Uh, next slide. And this is just a copy of the state hazard mitigation plan. So we have to address, uh, basically align each towns with the states and that's the hazards that we review are directly based off of the state plan. So for FEMA to accept any plan, we have to review it. every hazard the state did. Uh, we don't have to mitigate all the different hazards that the state does, but if we choose not to, uh, we have to make a statement on it. So, you know, earthquake is a big one that usually uh, our policy, you know, when working with towns with that, most towns have chosen not to try to come up with mitigation actions for earthquakes. Uh, most of our earthquakes in the region are generally like a two to a three. Uh, when we do get them, there's almost no damage reported on any of those. Uh, so uh, for the town level, you know, there's really not much to be done there. We usually we just say, you know, uh, the, that risk is so low that it, we're not choosing to uh, mitigate. Uh, hail is also another one that uh, some of the towns have chosen to do the same with. Uh, usually it's more vehicle damage, that sort of thing in our region. Uh, you know, even though it seems that we are seeing a little more hail often in some of these weather events late, uh, in the last couple of years. But, uh, I don't one. remember, just a quick question. I remember um, when we did this the two days ago, <laughs> the built environment. What does that mean, built environment? Uh, that would just be any infrastructure. So it, it's oh, actually, infrastructure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah, well, All right. All right. Yeah. I think on our form, we would, we would call it structures. Yeah. Yeah. We call yeah. it structure. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. Thanks. Oh, there it is. Yep. Yeah. 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 Good right. catch. I didn't even see that. Yep. Yeah, exactly. I, <laughs> I, I didn't like their language either. I, <laughs> I thought it was confusing okay. you know, with, with just infrastructure, you know, generally structures. Uh, so, uh, this, this is the uh, a score sheet that came out from a uh, meeting with uh, town staff and officials. Uh, if, as I say, we don't have too much, too many. <laughs> well, we get two people are gone. Yeah. Sandy, uh, the, the head of the planning commission and the head of the road crew, not here, sorry. Yeah, yeah, that's all right. But, uh, uh, but if anybody is viewing this recording uh, that Orca's uh, putting together for us today, if anybody's viewing that and disagrees with any of the rankings, uh, found in this sheet, mm -hmm. definitely reach out to us, let us know. We can have a discussion and uh, uh, discuss with the planning team of whether any of these scores should be adjusted. Uh, I forget what your answer is. Mike. Mike. Uh, from your review of it, Mike, did it, did you see anything you disagreed with since, mm -hmm. since we're having a very uh, no, nothing, int intimate? intimate. <laughs> <laughs> nothing jumped out at me. I mean, the, the main ones will be erosion landslides, obviously. Um, I, I don't know about some of the, like, um, inundation, flooding, and affecting the environment. It's a little high, but. You think that's a little high? That was Sandy. Blame her. She was the one. Uh, I mean, inundation, flooding is not necessarily, not usually bad for the environment. Oh, really? Interesting. So Many maybe... species depend on being in. Um, periodically flooded in riparian and floodplains. So I would, that, that's. Can we change it? I would change it down to a two, maybe. For unfair. Okay. I bet Sandy will agree with you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, three for invasive species is good because not we get spread by, by, by flooding. So it's tough as a scourge. Okay. That's the only thing that really jumped out at me really, um, at the moment. Yeah, each one of these is based off of a, let's say, for anyone that's uh, seen the recording, the probability is based off a of one to four scale. Uh, one being, uh, it only happens, it's once every hundred years. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't even have don't to even Don't even scope me. Sure, don't be Once every hundred years. Grab one of these. It has a 1% chance of having it. Oh, look. Yes. So, uh, a one being less, uh, yeah, less than 1% chance of occurring in any given year. 
Uh, two is occasionally one to ten percent chance in any given year. Uh, three, a ten to seventy-five percent chance in any given year, and four, highly likely, uh, based on especially with our anniversary flood. Uh, you know, flooding has obviously risen to the top, and you know, ice and snow events as well. Uh, landslides and invasive species were all given the highest probabilities. Uh, yeah, and I, I would, from our meeting with towns throughout the region, I would agree with your scoring on those completely. Uh, you know, obviously uh, emerald ash borer is here. We're seeing effects throughout besides Japanese knotweed. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there is even other plants that are more problematic like a uh, giant hogweed. Uh, you know, bad which, news. yeah, extremely bad news. You don't want to touch any part of it. Nope, don't even uh, look at it. <laughs> yeah. Don't turn it blind. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's it. It's really bad stuff. Uh, you want Tyvek suits and rubber gloves and everything to remove that plant. Uh, but, you know, uh, invasive's tough because it's kind of, it, it's such a broad range, you know, whether it's insects, plants, you know, uh, or other pathogens, they're just bacteria molds. Uh, but is it covered so that regardless of any of those things yeah yeah exactly it's a really broad it, personally I, I you know th this is how the state has chosen to put it together the invasive species and the infectious disease I think are too broad really for the way they're included in these plans uh, but in the uh, latest update for uh, these plans they only wanted to deal just with natural hazards so they removed because they used to sometimes have active shooter and other things uh, hazmat spills listed in these plans uh, fema has totally shifted to uh, pushing kind of that side of planning off on uh, uh, homeland security and just wants to focus on the natural hazards uh, but yeah like it, infectious disease i always find problematic because my original degree is in biology and they're lumping them all together and you're like are we talking about a smallpox level event right. a COVID, COVID event or you know swine flu or, or, or just the common flu you know which <laughs> there's huge levels of difference there uh, in both uh, what the efficacy is and, or you know and what the uh, uh, toll to the community would be uh, but yeah, on each one of these other scoring, uh, the infrastructure, uh, a one is a minor, and then that scales up to a four being disastrous. Uh, two is listed as moderate, three is severe. Uh, for life safety, one is minor, two is occasional hospitalization, three, multiple hospitalizations, and four is community-wide. Uh, same with economic impacts. It, the one is less than ten thousand dollars in damages. Two, ten to a hundred. Three, one hundred to a million. And four uh, is greater than a million. And environmental impacts: one would be negligible or very short-term impacts. Two is minor, uh, moderate cleanup costs. Three is moderate, uh, extended redirection of local resources. And four is major, so long-term recovery efforts. So. That's the framework all this was scored in. Uh, we will develop the mitigation actions from this. So we will primarily focus on uh, obviously fluvial, fluvial erosion, which has risen to the top, you know, and inundation flooding uh, right behind it. Uh, and well, and landslides, which mm. uh, we just wrapped up, uh, or just wrapping up Worcester's. There's is very similar to yours, and actually the score is almost the same yeah. on everything. It's very, very close, uh, and it's primarily what we see in almost every town. You know, fluvial erosion. You know, it. it I mean, in Montpelier and Berry City, inundation flooding is it's a little flip there, yeah. but it's generally those those two types of flooding and the landslides. You know, in the last two years have shown we have a lot of risk there. You know. Uh, with landslides developing in places we've never even seen before sometimes. Weird. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we, we, we're experiencing, you know, we, we're obviously in climate change now. Uh, uh, it's not a future event that's going to happen, it's happening. And the amount of, precip uh, the amount of precipitation we're seeing is, uh, in, we, we were uh, drafting sections for our regional plan uh, and 
the metric is from 1950 to 2012, the northeast part of the country has actually seen a 71% rain increase uh, over that time frame. So our topography actually isn't even adjusted for the amount of precipitation we're receiving now. We're going through a valley widening process. Exactly, exactly. Um, the old lake beds, yep. they're still sitting on the sides of our hills wow. coming in. Yep. And it's happened many times before, obviously. Uh, the lake shore ended where Brook and Center Road meet at the top. Wait, hold on. The lake shore ended where that, Brook that, and that, Center that was the That was the bottom of the lake was at where Brook Road meets Center Road. And then, like and then so Sue, then hold that flat. Back, coming, wait, which which at the at the first point here, not the back point. The back point, all the way up near the top. Yeah. Where Brook and Center come back together. Just yeah. above, just below. Just street, just south. right there is where the lake level was. No kidding. And he comes straight out to the Winooski from there. From the Winooski. Yeah. I think and, that was in Stacy's. And then point. so when the lake went away, Great Brook started cutting down through that lake bed to its current elevation, and now it's going down again. How many um, millions of years ago was that? Well, the lake was there probably 11,000 years ago. Oh, not that long ago, okay. Uh, at the end of the last ice age. At the, at the end of the last ice age, Lake Winooski, um, and that was the bed of the lake. We we documented that with, with Larry Becker and George Spring, Springson when Larry was a state geologist. And uh, so just imagine that, that lake bed coming all the way out to the Winooski Valley. Where was the other side of it? I mean, where, where was the, where was, where was the perimeter, perimeter, perimeter of the lake? So if the, the, you're saying the bottom of it was where Brook and Center was. No, 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 that's the top, the top of the lake. The actual bed of the lake was at that elevation where those roads meet. I keep thinking of the lake bed as the, as the floor. No, just, well, it, 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 it was the floor of the lake up there. Okay, the, then the, you know, the lake, Met the, it was the shore. That was the shore. That was the shore. Okay. And so the the bed was started there and then went down. So the shore was at Brooklyn. So basically the lake covered half of Middlesex, oh, yeah. Callis, oh, yeah. it, it, Montpelier, it, East All of our towns were probably two yeah. thirds lake. Wow. And so, you know, it's cut down through all that lake sediment yeah. over the years. Mm -hmm. And you know, boulders and glacial erratics and stuff come down and armor the bed and can keep things stable for a while until we hit a wet period. Exactly. And then and then that erodes the bed, which is what happened from Great Brook, and now it's going down again. And it will go down until enough rocks fall in and get congregated to armor the bed again. So this is the mapped glacial lake Winooski. That's yeah. it. Uh, that was on Stacy Pomeroy's yeah. thing. And that goes all the way up the Great Brook Valley. And that's exactly the same with uh, the Great Brook Road there in Plainfield. It's yes, it's, the okay. Yeah, the, it, there's no solid, yeah. nothing solid on the sides to stop it. Yeah, or, and, or the bed for a while. Exactly. Until it armors. Will yep. you repeat that story on the 15th during our road meeting? So oh, sure. Called and everybody I, can hear that. Stacy sent me a, um, a PowerPoint that I gave to the Middlesex Select Board in right. 2004. Yeah. That explained so all this. I wasn't here. <laughs> Me neither. I wasn't either. I was in Middlesex, but I wasn't here on the board. I'm happy to give it again. I don't have to change a word, yeah. probably. Yeah. But uh, it's been 20 years of, of talking about, you know, that effluvial erosion up there. And um, nobody listens until their driveway washes away. Well, you know, it's, not, it's, <laughs> it's gotten a lot worse. I mean, we could see it starting back then. And you could see the trajectory of where it was going. And, and uh, you know, now it's happening. I can totally so, hear Peter Hood. Ow! <laughs> Can't yeah. start worrying about that. And now we have to start worrying about it. <laughs> it was like the body bags. Remember the body bags story, Sarah? For the, for the um, pandemic that we didn't have years ago? I don't even I'm still I'm still tripping on the, on the glacial lake and trying to figure out its borders but anyway I'll, I'll go figure this out someplace else uh, okay so next slide yep next slide <laughs> okay. it's fascinating Mike it's just fascinating yeah 
Okay, so one of the things we report in this plan is we will update all the uh, uh, damage tables for the town. Uh, generally, because most of the damages uh, aren't tracked at the town level per storm event, we just use the countywide damages. Okay. Uh, uh, we keep, we basically take the ones from the state has mitigation plan and then just update those for each new disaster we get, you know, so that we keep them uh, up to date at the, uh, for the region level and uh, utilize these in all our LHMPs. But uh, it, it <laughs> to some extent, I guess it's, it can be disheartening but when you look through them and realize that uh, Washington County is the number two. Tied for uh, second. Yeah, tied for mm -hmm. second uh, uh, county with uh, federal disaster declarations. Though that is kind of a, it, it's, it's a uh, misnomer because it's based off of uh, Damages per Ooh. capita, and due to our low population, right. we actually qualify much easier than, say, uh, a county in Ohio or somewhere right. that has much higher uh, population. Ah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. so we, we actually, we, we try to utilize this as much as possible mm -hmm. for that federal fund to rebuild. <laughs> but can you explain that again? Why is it that, that we, it, what's that, that, why is it that the other counties can't? Uh, so it's based off of per uh, damage per capita. So this is per person. Uh -huh. So they use the census data. And uh, so for us to hit that, I think for our county, it's only $4.60. Yeah, $4.50, something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, per, per person. So because uh -huh. we only have a population of around 60,000 people in our county, uh, it yeah. makes it a lot easier for us to get there than, say, uh, uh, yeah. a larger municipality like, you know, same at the state level. Yes. A million dollars. Yeah, exactly. Threshold. Exactly. Right. That's not that's right. That's nothing. <laughs> yeah. So and that's to so can I just clarify to you guys when we say federal funding, um not all of this money is like a FEMA PA, is it? There's also other funding. Uh that's listed in this. It is uh I think this is entirely just FEMA PA. Okay, are there other federal fundings that happen during some sort of disaster or not really? Like afterwards yes, there are, but like No, there's there's uh federal highway dollars. Mm. So anything that yeah. is in on the federal highway system or anything that's even listed uh so in Middlesex there are no what's considered a town highway major collector. Uh there aren't any that I can think of in Middlesex. But uh, uh, like the uh, the Brook Road in Plainfield, and then Reservoir Road in Orange, that is considered a town highway major collector. Okay. So it has to do with the traffic volumes on your roads. What is uh, major collector? Mm -hmm. So it, it if it's a town highway major collector, it means it connects to more than one town generally. The connector, not collector. Yeah, okay. yeah, connector. It's Pittsburgh. Yeah, so yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's my Western Pennsylvania accent. Uh, by way of West Virginia, and who knows how many other states I've lived in. <laughs> but, uh, uh, connector, okay. Yes, it's a connector. Uh, generally, they run, sometimes they, they will all be in the same municipality, but often it connects to another main road. So, uh, you know, uh, 215, even though it's a state route in, uh, Cabot is considered a town highway major collector. So that that any damages to that road go under federal highway uh, for uh, replacement, reimbursement, that sort of thing. And it doesn't go through the FEMA process. Which is actually a nice thing for that collector road because F F FSWA acts pretty quickly. Exactly. It's a much <laughs> faster reimbursement yeah. Yeah. process. That, so I mean, they're actually getting reimbursed for their roads yeah. and it could have been by the end of last yeah. year. Many of the yeah. state and federal agencies have funding exactly. um, for flood hazard work. Uh, USDA, yeah. all EWP right. work. Oh, yeah. um, there are other flood programs they have. EPA has a flood exactly. hazard program. HUD, we, we paid for a lot of buyouts with HUD money yep. last time uh, in Irene, I mean. Yes, yeah, well, because they did the, so you can get what's called C, uh, Oh, CDBG. Let's see, see, this. Community Development Block, community block, development yeah. block Grant Disaster Recovery. Yes. Which, is which we didn't everybody. get this year, did we? For we 2023. Yes. 
If we haven't got it yet, it usually though that money is usually two years behind a storm. Uh, I thought there so, wasn't hope for that. And that takes a, an act of Congress. Uh, so it goes through the federal budget uh, to get the CDBGDR uh, funding. So yeah. there was some that came out last year and some of that went as far back as 2018, I believe. 20, wow. the, uh, there was a flood in West Virginia and they didn't get their CDBGDR money until last year. And, and what can you use that money for? Uh, it depends on who it comes through. It depends on how it's written up. Of we're going to give this money. In. It was pretty wide open in our yeah, with and that's why we were using it for buyouts and, and matching federal dollars to make people hundred percent whole. Right, I think we did use it for matching federal dollars. Yeah. I think somehow it went through the community, like Two Rivers out of Queechee, and they were the ones yeah. who were yes. managing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was can pretty I, wide open. Can I ask okay. a clarifying question on this flood hazard history of dollar amounts? Sarah, yes. for example, on 7 14 2020, when we had three to four inches of rain and there were 5,000 in town damages, did the town apply directly to FEMA for, for that? Or was that some other? Did the state apply for it and then gave us 5,000? I have no, I don't even remember. Like, I don't remember us having all these conversations around FEMA for all of this, this stuff here. Well, so like I said, they, these are counting damages. Oh, I know. I know. It's 2014, so 2020. So, okay, Liz. Your not, town might not have actually. Well, no, because actually, you know, Liz, who applied for that was uh, our, our friend Paul Sermonara. And he got a, okay. Macy Road was washed away and he applied for, for that funding. And he got, in the, I think we got the, the $5,000. I don't remember the 7 okay. 2021 issue but I, I do remember that county damages yeah okay yeah. so who applies in a county damage for fema money so it, it, it isn't so like some if it doesn't have a dr designation on it it just means that it was oh. an event that they may have gone out and either v trans or the state actually went out and collected uh those numbers for those damages but it didn't rise to the level of getting a federal declaration so if it is uh, a federal okay. declaration as the actual uh, declaration number, number of it, the yeah. DR, so 4720 was last summer's flood. Uh, okay. And to be honest, I still haven't so, seen a total on what the damages were. You know, the so FEMA started. will still give money even if it's not a federal declaration. They have no, some pots I, of money. No, they actually don't. Uh, if, yeah, the, the only ones they actually gave money for are the DR ones. Yeah. Oh, okay. Usually, so who gave this other money, this 250, some other federal pot of money? Nope. They either got it from the state or they didn't get any at all. Uh, oh, and that's how much it cost. But it's just showing what the costs are of some of these disasters. Oh, you know, Because we not every storm, you know, is able to get that much, but, you know, the town still ends up shouldering the burden I, for I, the I, towns. We, we had a spring storm. I'm trying to think of what it was. Like, I think it was May 2018. I think it was May 2020, May 2018. And uh, we had $20,000 in damage and we got, oh, there's Sandy. Oh, she's probably. Hey, Sandy. Sandy, hey, I'm upstairs in the meeting. We, you're, are you trying to get into the meeting? Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah. I'm sorry, that's probably me. I'm supposed to let her in. I don't see her. And there's hazard mitigation money, yes. part of hazard mitigation money floating around year to year. Yes. So there, there could be. Well, that, that money is, so this is just the damages. Okay, okay. So the hazard mitigation money you're talking about, directly after any event, 15% of the total. Yeah. And that's why, gonna, and then you best uh, has, has mitigation. best case. Um, they, they don't, you know, it's never going to be exact because, uh, like, we still haven't got the total dollar amount from last summer's flood, but they have queued up ninety million. Yeah, I saw that. You know, in the state, obviously, uh, jumped out and said they would cover the match on that because it was such an extreme event. Uh, uh, we don't expect that to happen again. Yeah. You know, I, I with a full cover. You mean? Yeah, yeah. I don't expect the the state to. Uh, we do expect to get a disaster declaration from this July 11th uh, flood. You're the first person to say that. I've worked with FEMA on it. Okay, and they, the, the FEMA rep that we toured with okay. expects us to get both PA and I. I mean, we can't guarantee that. But from the damages he saw, he was like, and he's from Region 1. Yeah. He's like, I, I would expect to see that, you okay. know. 
uh, especially after touring Plainfield and you know, and then uh, some of the other communities. Uh, there is enough loss there, you know. We, we definitely saw enough structures that will have to be destroyed. Uh, the, actually, the easiest one we saw was uh, in Faston. Uh, the sale was supposed to close the next day, so we know what the dollar value is for that property. Oh. And it's a landslide, and it's there's no way you're going to stop it. That's, you know, that's the thing you just don't stop landslides. No, no, exactly. Once it gets going, you're there's not much. It's going to stabilize itself eventually. The, the only way, and well, maybe while we're waiting, I I'm just going to pass around. I, I did up a few recommendations for actions. I wrote some down too, and I, they might be crazy, but and I can send that electronically, and you can pass you. No, this is. This is great. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, okay, um, are we going to mitigation actions now or no? Yeah, well, yeah, we're good. Yeah, I I just saw that, that it's 20 minutes till and I thought I'd hand it out what, whether or not we talk about it. It's not for me to say, but... No, uh, but yeah, it, we, that is something we try to start collecting in these meetings uh, is the mitigation actions for, you know, that the town is thinking of and, and that, you know, basically... We need a mitigation action for at least something that will fit for each one of those hazards, uh, unless the town chooses to, like the earthquake one that I mentioned, uh, the town chooses not to address it, that's all right. But, uh, but FEMA are, really isn't it safer if we do address it? Uh, with earthquakes, it's pretty tough to, to address. So, okay. you know, I mean, we don't, especially since we don't have building codes, that's generally the main way earthquakes are addressed okay and we're sticking with these hazards and not adding any other yeah I mean if if, if you wanted to we could always add more but uh, these are the ones we have to have in okay. without there, it out. <coughs> uh, there was on Monday discussion about um, mud on roads but they're not necessarily um, just mud season yeah, this is the Zara's thing so yeah I gave in that little packet from yeah. our meeting um, those are all spots that are horrible we're driving through pudding yeah. Even in the winter time. Oh yeah. On those twenty-eight spots. Okay. Yeah, yeah. it's at Waitsfield uh, when working at their LHMP. They brought that up. Uh, the mud season conditions because they this last winter they were like we had six completely separate mud seasons and right and especially for first responder response they right. were like this is becoming an, a huge issue. I think it's a great idea to put it in there. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. really do. It's a public safety issue. Oh, it is most definitely. You know, it's an access issue. Uh, but you can't evacuate if you can't drive through. You can't, you know, like, you if can't, it's pudding. if you can't get the ambulance to the home, that's a problem Believe as well. I, you know, I, it goes, I, I understand. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Uh, uh, especially if you've got where, you're, you know, we, on our other work, you know, because I also uh, do transportation work, would love to work with you on that and possibly even come up with, you know, a... Uh, basically prioritizing that your list of how do you then go back and either add uh, drainage to the roadbed, mm -hmm. you know, to, to get the moisture out of it, you know, so whether that's rebuilding the road, that's the exactly drainage. all of those spots are what we need is to build, rebuild it from the ground up. Exactly. So that's what those spots need. So I, I know yeah. from uh, talking with uh, uh, Eric. Uh, Latavier. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Eric, that we, uh, He's hit uh, corduroy roads before while digging on the roads, you know, so you obviously it was a swampy road lo location to start with. That's why they installed a corduroy road back, you know, a hundred years ago. Right. And it's just had the uh, material applied on top of it, and, you know. Not working anymore. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> with, with the precipitation amounts we're getting now, we obviously have to adjust, so you know. Yeah. I put a 44332 on mud seasons. <laughs> 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 yeah. But uh, yeah, we can we can definitely add some. Probably if we put it in the uh, uh, like the ice and snow section. Sure, uh, I think that's good. And, and put some language into uh, address mud season and trying to figure out a process and planning yeah. to on how to you know update the roads to the standards to still provide access. What did you put? Four two four three two. Four 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 three three two. So is that because infrastructure you're considering is roads versus yeah. buildings? Yeah. Is that right though? Can we include roads with infrastructure? 
That's a, mm, yeah, it's a good question. Wait. Actually, looking at your list of things you sent it, uh, you know, put on here, uh, the uh, hydrologic study is something we were actually just discussing today. Uh, I think that uh, I'm going to have to go back and check because I think it's NRCS. So the National, uh, uh, so yeah, National Soil Conservation Service. NRCS. Yeah, they uh, uh, they have the EWP program, but I. We were in a meeting and they talked about, I think it was at the flood symposium at the Capitol, that they had talked about uh, being able to study watersheds. And uh, I've already talked with Brian Voigt of our staff who does our natural resources work of possibly trying to do the uh, upper, the smaller watersheds because the Winooski is going to end up getting studied sure. from last summer's flooding. Uh, UVM and some other groups have definitely been wanting to do larger hydrologic studies but we definitely want to try to catch the small, the sub watersheds. Yeah, and, they, I mean, UVM just did a flood probability mapping. Um, yes. And you, maybe you've seen that, but they, that goes much further Hello? than FEMA maps. Yes. Um, so that and would the, be interesting uh, to, look at to see what, what they're identifying for floodplains. But the idea of doing oh, sub uh, culvert water, sheds, so just to yeah. to take you know, it gets you away from thinking about ditches as just stormwater conveyance and into almost the I'm intermittent sure we'll, sure we'll stream category exactly which yeah. then engenders a whole different size rating on, on culverts so that's kind of where i'm going with part of that is to understand what's the proper size of some of these culverts if they're really intermittent streams exactly which, which they're turning into oh yeah yeah um as well as just crossovers for infiltration and i see a whole bunch of crossovers going in on, on South Bear today. So I was pleased to see that because that's what's going to save our ditches. Oh, yeah, most definitely. Wait, wait, what did you say? What's going to save our ditches? These, these uh, cross culverts. Ditch yeah, cross yeah, culverts yeah, yeah. To, yeah. to spread out and infiltrate. Yep. Yeah. Yes, cross culverts. But I think data on, you know, hydrologically looking at those culvert sheds then gives you an idea of what's the conveyance exactly um that you really have to be dealing with yeah because if you don't understand you don't know yeah. what size structure well, now with computer put in technology you just touch a dot and it draws the shed yep mm -hmm. basically so you don't have to it's not like the old days of uh also uh i saw you you have the uh flood hazard river corridor bylaws yeah. uh from at least uh, i i would say I, I would agree that you should probably should think about like not just the interim status but going for a full uh, river corridor bylaw. I I can't say definitively, but I think the state is going to move to that I, and I, get rid of the interim I can status. Give, I can give you the update on that. Okay. Um, with the passage of um, one twenty one at mm -hmm. one twenty one, the state will be adopting river corridor rules for all streams greater than two square miles. Yes. All streams greater than two square miles. So that'll hit the very end, lower end of Great Brook mm -hmm. and, and, and other streams similarly sized. So the state will be regulating river corridors um, for the big streams and rivers in two, starting 2017. But smaller, like the upper parts of Great Brook, they won't be. But, but they are going, the other part of Act 121 says that towns shall, by a certain date, adopt um, flood hazard area and, and bylaws consistent with the model that they put out. Yes. So they're going to put out a model, they're, they're going to take the existing model and tweak it a little bit, but it's not going to get any less stringent. No. Okay. That model also includes river corridor pieces because many of our smaller streams don't have floodplains. Exactly. They're just erosion hazards. Right. Hmm. So my recommendation is that since Middlesex is going to have to look at that model bylaw anyway yeah. and adopt it per, per state law, that's the time to just do, do the whole ball of wax because most of our damages are erosion hazards anyway mm -hmm. in these smaller streams. We don't want anybody built else building a house on Great Brook or no. any of these other exactly. uh, valley widening situations is my feeling. So right. um, that's why I... Yeah, so middle sex you go. What you're saying is middle sex you go for the full bylaw. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have to look at it anyway. We, we, we should. Could we put you the head of that committee? Thank you. That's awesome. <laughs>
That's how it happened for me, Mike. <laughs> yeah, that's great. She didn't wait for my answer. That's pretty good. Cool. <laughs> I mean, this. You mentioned that that's a yes. She's right? been doing this for a while. Oh, I, 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 will, I will definitely participate in that. I have to tell you that we have, that I have, the zoning administrator needs to be aware of this because we, with housing crunches and land crunches, we have some strange building propositions going on. I haven't seen them come through, but I've talked to people. We know we own, we inherited this land, we own this land, we're doing some subdivisions along Macy Road. And I'm like, mm, ugh, you know, and it's hard to say as a town without saying, you know, we, we need this. We need people to understand that no more KC, you know, LO KC houses on across a bridge on that brook. No. Yeah. I'm not hoping to pick her out. I'm just saying that no, that I... type of construction is dangerous. Yeah. Yeah, you need to try to limit that risk, and it's so much easier to do it ahead of time. Right, that's what I mean. It's also nice to say, these are the bylaws. Exactly. Out of our hands. Yeah. 2004. <laughs> 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 Does it take, well, it takes it off the town staff. It does. The it takes off the town staff and any yeah. arguments and people, you know, they're always trying to work around stuff. Uh, yeah, no, I, I think it, I think, I mean, that's why Act 121 passed this year. The state looked at these, these floods and said, there's just no way. Do you have any idea about the timeline that they're looking at for these things? I mean, is this something that the Planning Commission should be looking at? That's now? all laid out in statute uh, now. I can get those. Oh, that's okay. I can all yeah, Google it. It's 2027. No, 20, 20, that is 20, right 20, right right for the state, but I don't, the state yeah. rule, but I'm yeah, not sure if the municipal the, adoption may even be before that. I'm not sure. Yeah. We have to look at it. Yeah, yeah as I say, we're still I, waiting on the flood, the new flood maps, you know, oh. which we have to adopt, the towns will have to adopt, and those theoretically should have already been out. And that's also a that. time to look at your bylaw. Exactly. Because when you get the new map, you're gonna to have to update your bylaw. Yes. Uh, so that's that's when you do it. Yeah, and it, we will definitely be reaching out to, we, we have funding to support the towns in and, that. And that, so as soon as that. That'll be available. Exactly. That, so. Yeah, as soon as that comes out, we can uh, assist the, the uh, planning commissions in that, that update. Yep. Um, my first recommendation is kind of long there, but I, I feel like, and I did, I singled out Great Brook at the end, but basically, it, are there any places where, you know, we can, through various actions, you know, stabilize the bed of some of, bed out of some of our streams? And there's various methods to do that, but it's tied in with potential buyouts. It's tied in with all, all how do we give some of these books a little more space? so that we can create floodplain, so we can get a stable bed on the stream, so it doesn't continue to go down and cause more landslides. Um, you know, yeah. or at least we slow that process down considerably. So that, I've seen it done in other communities where you do a comprehensive, right now we're doing spot fixes, right? Mm -hmm. right. And all these spot fixes are working against each other. Mm -hmm. They are making it worse for the other ones. Exactly. So we need to look at the stream comprehensively. Uh, in, in several other communities around the state, we've done that. Brattleboro is a great example on the Whetstone. We did a hydrologic and hydraulic analysis of the stream and, and under, came to understand which parcels we could begin working with to create that space. Uh, you know, another part of it is opening up floodplains, taking various berms and levees out. Um, there, so there's a whole suite of practices that we've done, but it, but it, you got to do it in the context of the whole reach, mm -hmm. and uh, you know that if we do this here, it's going to have a consequence there. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, the hazard, hazard mitigation planning, if it's in their plan, and that planning money comes around, we can potentially get a hundred grand, mm -hmm. hire one of our river engineers. Uh, locally and and get that done Most definitely. if it if it ultimately points out the fact that all of this work is going to cost 10 times more than buying out everybody in the valley then you have the data then mm -hmm. you have it right in front of you you know yeah and so having those facts is important Ultimately. There's another factor that I know you guys aren't considering at all, but that our treasurer considers is that with every single buyout, we lose something off the grant list. Oh, I'm yes. aware of that. Yep. But yeah. there is it's a, a flip side to that. For every time you buy out a home, you actually are helping your homeowner's insurance for every other person in that town. 
So your homeowner's insurance is entirely tied to the this. damages is that it you receive. Or is it flood insurance? No, even the homeowner's insurance. The homeowner's. Everyone's homeowner's insurance is tied to that. Uh, because this is actually just came up recently, and to be honest, I didn't completely understand it until this summer. Uh, but if you leave a flood impacted home in the community, that is pulling down everyone's or increasing everyone's homeowner's insurance in that community. So it's just another extra piece to understand how that and you're weighing you're weighing the loss of that grand list value against repeatedly repairing roads. You know, repairing yeah. the road and exactly you know so it, it, you this requires a cost benefit analysis right and so you want to do that as a part of the study because if you're going to apply for FEMA money you got to have that anyway mm -hmm. um, so you know there's that the dollars and cents have got to be there yeah and but again you know like this is why the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission is so important because this is a lot for a little town of 1,800 people to be running cost-benefit analysis. Oh, no, you'd hire a consultant to do that. Okay. Yeah. But still. But still. But who, who pays for that consultant? With the grant. Okay. We put it in the plan that, that we can go for the That's grant. That's what Mike was just saying. I yes. can see who's going to be on team funding. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> We ran into each other at Joey. Well, Liz, do you want to make me the host again, just in case I need to allow people in for the BOA meeting? What? Uh, uh, yeah, I was just going to say, John Demeter just called me to say uh, he doesn't think he can make it. Do we have a quorum? It's just that it's not as productive. I'm um, worried that we don't. Oh, okay. I think that Cheryl's yeah. not here, and that's a big yeah. part of the quorum. Uh, and Chris is going to be late. I don't know if Jan's going to come. Uh, I haven't heard. How from many people do we need? That's always a question for BOA, but we're in a decision-making situation now, so we're. Because I, I did get feedback from John, and I thought Randy was supposed to send me some feedback. I don't think right. he's gotten around to it. Since this is just deliberations, we're not going to open and close it. We're just going to deliberate. That's all we're going to do. We don't have to worry about that. There's no public portion. I wanted to close it. What? Are we talking about the BOA or are we talking about this? I'm talking, this about the BOA. <laughs> I'm talking about the BOA. We don't have to worry about a we don't have to worry about a quorum for the BOA. People are chiming in. Oh, okay. And Dorinda's downstairs okay. and she'll come up here at five. So we've got Dorinda and she can play treasure. Right. I mean the important part was having the, the the public hearing with a quorum. This is just a deliberation. I'm just making this up as I go along. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to make you host. How do I do that? Okay. Let's see. You just click on next to, I'm, I'm middle sex. Make host. Yeah. Make host. There Here comes go. Sandy Levine. You just did in a minute. Oh, there she is. <laughs> Sandy, you got in right at the end of the meeting. <laughs> She's, she doesn't care. <laughs> so I just want to say I'm really happy that Mike is here helping us with yeah. my biggest worry is Brook Road for our hazard mitigation. I think that's our biggest hazard. Um, and so I really like that Mike is here to guide us on next steps for dealing with Brook Road. I just want to just want to throw that out there, Mike, that you are yeah. now my hero. Because East, East Hills, just because East Hills is a major thoroughfare, it's a major but I don't, I've never been on Macy Road, so I can't. Okay, well, Macy Road has, you know, it's not a dead end like Lower Sunnybrook is, even though that road gets flooded tremendously. Yes. But oh, Macy yeah. Road, to me, what's your take on Macy Road? I, I'm not familiar with it yet. I mean, I'm willing to go look at other situations. It's got cool. some problems, similar. People's similar. houses starting to go it. in. Is Macy the other one that goes off a of two going up the hill? Is that the? No, Macy is on the it's other side. It's off of Wood Road. It's, off, it's on the other side of town. So if you. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, I, know, I know what you're talking about. I know Macy Road. Yeah. Because there's the house <laughs> down there with the uh, uh, the handicapped ladies. I think so, yeah. yes. There's like a little dog that lives there. Yep, on the first house on the left. When you're yeah. Road, uh, Patterson Creek. You go over yeah. a troublesome bridge that we'll probably need to talk about. Yeah. That goes up to Wood Road and then it fall, It goes it's along the, the edge of the creek, the, of yeah. Patterson Creek, and it keeps falling in and falling in and falling in. Needs the bottom needs abandoned and come in from the top. And then you go the top. <laughs> is what I thought when I was there with FEMA. <laughs> Did you? Yeah. Yeah, 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 we were there. Look at that. Yeah, so I that's another valley that's great, right in my backyard. Yeah. Yeah. That's but 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 Patterson is it's got a pretty well armored bed. It looks like it. And so you know, it's not it's not as bad as Great Brook in, in that regard from my from the last time I walked it. I walked yeah. from your place yep. all the way down. So 
Uh, but lower school. sunny, but, but you're thinking yeah. East Hill is, is also in danger of collapsing? I mean, I don't, I don't know. I, I do know that I need to get back to Richard so we can get that cross culvert done. Yeah, right. Yeah, that needs to be done. Well, that's why I didn't, I said especially Great Brook, but I think we should do this, we should look at the various um, valleys that are, are, have this road stream interaction and, and just decide you know which ones we want to try to include in something oh, yeah. like that. Yeah, even the bottom of I Shady Rill, which is going. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I from the region's perspective, we'd like to study them all. Yeah, because it's changing that much that you know. Well, you you know, think yeah, about this Rill. one, and and I'd like to see it flushed out to the to the point where it wouldn't take much to throw it together an application. Yeah, you know, if it's laid out, you can put some detail on it. Application um, for what? For bio. Has a mitigation funding, right? Yeah. But these things, we have, but they have to be in. They have to be in. But those bios have to be in flip. No, no, not bios. Just study. The, 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 study. Okay, the alternative yeah, right. analysis for stabilization. Great, that would be great. Mm -hmm. yeah, the, the bios do have to be in a marked floodplain. Right, but right. then we have the people who are seeking, uh, who aren't in the floodplain, who are seeking a, a, a flood resilient communities bio. Yes, there there is funding. For that again, yep. they haven't. The state really, to be honest, they're so oh, in response and yeah. inundated that they're working through the FEMA process. I right. assume that once they complete that, I have or a very they, they might. applicant who wants the select board to approve it on on August twentieth. I approve their application. I'm like, my head is spinning because I didn't think that program was right back up again. We should we should pile. Uh, I haven't heard of them. We should pile them in here though because things change in five years. Oh yeah, yeah. one. Well, that's why we would really love to see the new FEMA flood maps because they did use LIDAR data yeah. for them. So they're going to be far more accurate. And Supposedly. Well, it, it, talk, to Rob, the, talk to Rob Evans. Yeah, He's well, the problem too is our brooks have actually the, the bed of the brook. Yeah. Like the Great Brook and Plainfield is three feet higher right now than it was previously. Yeah. Three feet higher? Three feet higher because so much sediment came down from the, the rest of the road. It's all yeah. in the village. So yeah. then in the village, the brook base is three feet well, higher. You can see it on the foundation That's the big stones. issue we've always had with FEMA maps. They're a snapshot in time. Exactly. Yeah. And these that's beds are going up and down. Yeah. And yeah. almost as the moment the ink is dry, if we have another storm that changes the bed elevation, exactly. the map is not accurate anymore. I have a question because you guys are experts here, and maybe I'm crazy, but is there any, cause, uh, we have so many water um, springs, things like that. Like, we're like a, a, a volcano of water, basically, this mountain here. Any chance that that water would somehow go bad, be poisoned? I mean, we all have wells. Just, again. I'm going to say no. <laughs> well, I'm going to say any chance. Like, I'm going to go with more yes. I think there is a the water chance. supply division should be able to give us some insight on that. I mean, many of our rocks are, are well drained to bedrock. Yeah, as a summit, if you had in a layer that actually had arsenic or something, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm act, but generally, no. scenario. <laughs> 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 well, <laughs> 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 